Neanderthals, our nearest extinct kin, have intrigued us for a long time with their mysterious existence and our evolutionary past. They wandered from the icy wastelands of northern Europe to the dry deserts of the Middle East for several hundred thousand years. They have left abundant traces of their intricate tools and lifestyles. Then, in a relatively brief period, they disappeared from the fossil record. We probe further into the realm of Neanderthals, examining the most recent scientific findings and hypotheses about their biology, conduct, and relationships with contemporary humans. With the assistance of scientific publications and a paleoanthropologist, we aim to resolve some of the most captivating queries about our remote relatives. Who exactly were the Neanderthals? What type of environment did they live in? What set them apart from us, and what similarities did we share? And ultimately, what caused their demise? Join us as we uncover the secrets of the Neanderthals and learn what their history can reveal about our own beginnings and role in the world. The narrative of the Neanderthals is intertwined with the broader narrative of human evolution. Neanderthals, modern humans, and several other species constitute our genus, Homo, which originated in Africa nearly 3 million years ago. These remote hominins are descendants of Australopithecines. Australopithecines were a notably prosperous genus of bipedal apes residing in eastern and southern Africa. They were fully bipedal, maintaining an upright stance, and crafted the earliest stone tools discovered on this planet 3.3 million years ago. Australopithecines were fashioning altered stone tools at the Lonqui 3 site. This behavior is significantly more sophisticated than merely utilizing a rock, they needed to choose stones that could fracture conchoidally and strike them precisely to form a sharp border. These instruments were presumably utilized for dissecting scavenged remains, but other applications like crafting wood or protection are also plausible. While some Australopithecines did employ stone tools, many did not. It's highly probable that our genus descends from those who did. The earliest evidence of our genus is a 2.8 million year old specimen. 2.6 million years ago, the initial Old Allen tools were crafted. Old Allen tools are stones modified to form a sharp, durable edge. It's highly probable that our genus existed during the development of these tools and were their makers. Homo habilis, one of the initial members of our genus, emerged 2.3 million years ago and utilized old down tools. Homo erectus, often deemed the first true human, evolved 2 million years ago and eventually developed a novel stone technology named the Aculean. These hand axes were developed by removing more flakes from both sides of a core to create a much longer cutting edge. They are frequently regarded as the multipurpose tools of their era, suitable for dissecting animals, modifying wood, digging, and even for protection or hunting. This technology migrated out of Africa with Homo erectus to numerous parts of Eurasia, including Northern Europe, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia. These groups adapted to their new habitats and evolved into distinct species or more advanced forms of Homo erectus. One of these descendants was Homo antecessor. They resided in Western Europe 1.2 million years ago, marking them as the earliest known hominins to inhabit Western Europe. They are believed to have branched off from Homo erectus. Their tools were relatively basic, and they became extinct around 800,000 years ago. It is believed that they did not contribute genetically to future European species. Another wave of Homo erectus or perhaps a more advanced form replaced them by the Middle Pleistocene, 780,000 years ago. The descendants of Homo erectus evolved into more advanced forms with larger brains and advanced technology. The hominins inhabiting Africa, Europe, and Western Asia during the Middle Pleistocene are collectively termed Homo heidelbergensis. There have been discussions about whether to categorize African populations as a different species from European or Asian populations due to their distinct differences. Genetics suggest that these populations might have diverged as early as 700,000 years ago. The differences between these populations continued to grow, and by about 3 to 400,000 years ago, 
they were distinct enough to be categorized as different species. In Africa and some parts of the Middle East, our ancestors resided, while Neanderthals lived in Europe and parts of Asia, and Denisovan and other hominins lived in East Asia. Denisovan are another crucial hominin in the Neanderthal story because they are more closely related to Neanderthals than we are, based on nuclear DNA. Neanderthals and Denisovan share a more recent common ancestor with each other than with Homo sapiens. This common ancestral population, dubbed Neandersovans, is believed to have migrated from Africa to Eurasia, interbreeding and replacing other archaic hominins in these regions. Based on mutation rates, this population would split into Neanderthals and Denisovan between 470,000 and 380,000 years ago. This aligns with the emergence of early Neanderthals during this period. 450,000-year-old remains from France, typically classified as Heidelbergensis, display the first Neanderthal characteristics. 430,000-year-old remains from Chama de los Huesos in northern Spain bear more resemblance to Neanderthals and are considered to be precursors to later classic Neanderthals. Neanderthal characteristics continued to evolve, and around 130,000 years ago, classic Neanderthals emerged, displaying a range of distinctive skeletal features from early Neanderthals. These populations are better understood due to the improving quality of the fossil record as we approach the present. Before discussing the anatomy of these individuals, there remains one question to answer, were Neanderthals truly a separate species? The question may appear straightforward, but it is highly nuanced. It's a pertinent question to ask about what defines a species and how one should regard Neanderthals in relation to modern humans in terms of species. More on this in second part of our series on channel. Thanks for watching.